Thank you, Jesus. We just ask that the revelation of you and your light come forth and fill this room, that everyone has the eyes of their heart enlightened with your light so that they can understand the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and so that they can receive this revelation deep inside of them by having the eyes of their heart enlightened in Jesus' name. Today we're going to teach you probably one of the most powerful revelations that we've ever received up to this point. I'm going to show you today biblically how the health and the condition of your soul is directly connected to your personal peace level and the contentment level that you have been longing to feel. Okay, I'm going to show you biblically how the health of your soul is connected to the health of your relationships between husbands and wives, family members, friends, the people in the church, the people in businesses. I'm going to show you today how the health of your soul will directly affect your level of dominion over demonic powers. That when you get healing in your soul, your level of dominion will completely leap up in its authority. I'm going to show you today how the healing of your soul is directly connected to your financial increase. The increase in the blessing that you've been waiting for, believing God for, and he said it's going to come, is being held up because you have woundedness in your soul that hasn't healed yet. And I'm going to show you biblically how the healing of your soul can be directly connected to the supernatural healing of your body that you've been believing for. That there are people with afflictions or recurring sicknesses or things like that that are being held up in their healing because of the wounds inside their soul. Now as we begin... I want to lay a foundation about the soul. So hold on with me as I do this so you can have an understanding about how the soul works. Okay, what constitutes your soul, man? Your mind, your will, and your emotions make up the soul. We're three-part beings, body, soul, and spirit, right? When we were born again in Christ Jesus, our spirit man was made instantly perfect. Okay, there's no sin, there's no darkness, there's no woundedness in our spirit man. We have the same spirit of Christ It lives in us. That's what the word of God says. Okay. However, upon your regeneration in Jesus, your soul was not made instantly perfect. Okay. Your mind, your will, and your emotions are constantly under the process of being brought into a state of healing and into the lordship of Jesus Christ. That's why 1 Corinthians 10 says that we are, instructs us that we are to take every thought captive that would set itself up against God into captivity to Christ. That scripture indicates to us that there's a process of bringing your mind, your will, and your emotions into a place of healing and submission to Jesus. Okay, so upon your regeneration, your spirit man is made instantly perfect, but your soul man is not. How many of you know our soul's a mess? <laughs> Over our lifetime, each and every one of us have gone through situations, circumstances, different events that have deeply wounded our soul, okay? Now, the wounds on your soul can completely affect your peace level and the way you feel every day inside yourself, okay? Because the wounds on your soul can affect the way you think. They can affect your mind. The way you think cause you to take wrong actions, make wrong decisions. The wounds in your soul can affect your will, your ability to choose right and wrong. The wounds on your soul can affect your emotions. They can cause you to have unhealthy, unbalanced, even dangerous emotions like depression, anxiety, loneliness, jealousy. Have you ever woke up one day and just said like, man, what is going on? And you just feel miserable? And you're thinking, what is that, God? It's more than likely you're feeling an effect of a wound that's inside your soul. The wounds on your soul are what can cause strife and contention between husbands and wives, family members, friends, loved ones, church members, people at work. You see, when people have wounds on their soul from events that happen throughout their life, what happens is this, is they begin to speak to other people out of the bitterness of those woundings. Listen to proof. From the book of Job in chapter 10. This is Job speaking. He said, I am weary of my life and I loathe it. I will give free expression to my complaint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. Okay, do you remember what happened to Job? His entire family and everything he owned was completely wiped out. Do you think that those events could leave wounds on his soul? 
You bet they did. Okay, and now Joel was lashing out at God and his friends who were trying to console him out of the bitterness that was in his soul. The wounds in your soul can cause trouble between people, between you and your spouse, your children, your friends, your people at church. It's all coming out of the woundedness in your soul. People are speaking to each other out of the bitterness that's in their soul. And you know what? Half the time, the stuff they're saying to another person doesn't have anything to do with that person. It has to do with a wound that happened to the, to the person who's speaking way back when in their life. Okay. The wounds on your soul, man, were created by sin. Someone either sinned against you or you sinned against yourself. Maybe someone sinned against you. They, they verbally abused you or they molested you or they rejected you. Okay, or maybe you sinned against yourself. You committed adultery. You got involved in drugs or alcohol or watching pornography. Either way, it's sin that creates the wounds in your soul, man. Now listen to what Mark 9 says about this to prove it. It says this, and I'm reading from the Amplified. If your eye causes you to stumble and sin, pluck it out. It's more profitable and wholesome for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell, where there are worm which preys on the inhabitants, and listen to this, and is a symbol of the wounds inflicted on a man himself by his sins does not die. Okay, this scripture is talking about wounds and where they're at. They're on your soul. How do I know that? Because it's talking about your eye, right? If your eye causes you to stumble and sin, pluck it out. There in that scripture, the word eye means the eyes of the mind, the faculty of knowing. What makes up the soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. So when it talks about the eye there, it's talking about more than just your little eye. It's talking about your soul, Okay, haven't you ever heard the phrase, the eye is the window to the soul? Okay, so it's talking about your soul, and it's talking about how the wounds get on your soul. The scripture says, quote, that there's a worm in hell, which preys on the inhabitants there, and is a symbol of the wounds inflicted on the man himself by his sins. According to scripture, that's how the wounds got there. Someone sinned against you, or you sinned against yourself. It's so cool that the scripture calls those sins and the wounds that they create worms because what's a worm when it gets into your, into your intestines? It's a parasite. It can cause you death and bad disease and horrible discomfort and pain. That's what sin does to your soul. It's a worm. It's a parasite that can literally put a gouge or a gash inside your soul, man. Okay. So once sin creates a wound in your soul, listen to this part. Once sin creates that wound in your soul, it will cause you to sin even more. Even if it was created by somebody else's sin against you, it will cause you to sin even more. That's why Mark 9 says, if your eye or the wounds on your soul cause you to stumble in sin, pluck them out. Okay? A wound in your soul created by sin causes you to sin anymore. You ever heard, like some people, not everyone, but... People who are abused as children grow up to be abusers themselves, but they don't want to. Do you think that they want to do that? Because when they're being abused, they think that this is the most horrible thing that's ever happened to me in my life. How can I bear it? But yet they grow up to do the same thing. Why do you think that is? Because there was a wound put on their soul created by that sin, and that same wound is now causing them to do the very thing that they don't want to do. And Paul, Paul talks about that in Romans 7. Listen, he says this. Now, if I do what I do not desire to do, it is no longer I doing it. It is not myself that acts, but the sin principle which dwells in me, listen, fixed and operating in my soul. Did you hear that? Paul is saying that the last thing he wanted to do was sin, but the sin principle that was fixed and operating inside his soul was making him do it. It was overwhelming him and causing him to sin. It was controlling him. Wow, that's what the wounds in your soul do. They're created by sin and they cause you to sin even more. They control you and make you sin even more, even though you don't want to do it. <laughs> I want you to think about what's going to happen when those wounds are healed. <laughs> you know, how many of you heard the, the, everybody preaching now about holiness and righteousness and purity and blamelessness? And boy, that's a good word, right? Because we're being called to a higher level in God than ever before. But I'm telling you what, you cannot, 
You cannot be walking in purity, holiness, and righteousness when the wounds inside your soul are fixed and operating there and they're controlling you and causing you to sin. When they get healed, that's when the sin will begin to cease. I mean, you can say all day long, I am not, I'm not going to yell at my husband. I'm not going to hit my kids. I'm not going to eat, overeat. I'm not going to watch that bad TV show. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to do those drugs. And you can hold out with all your might and, and hold your breath and try your hardest. But finally, you're going to do exactly, exactly what Paul says you're going to do. You're going to do the thing you do not desire because of the sin principle that's fixed and operating in your soul. Ooh, Jesus. But when our wounds are healed, hallelujah, it's going to be easy to walk in holiness and righteousness. We're going to be flowing in the spirit. We're no longer going to be trolled by the wounds in our soul. It's going to be easy for us to be only listening to the words and acting out the words of God and taking action on what God's telling us to do because we're going to be moving straight and purely out of our spirit, unhindered by the wounds in our soul.